from Orlando, Florida. It's the Cube. Covering SAP Sapphire Now 2018. Brought to you by NetApp. Hi, welcome to theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend, and we are with NetApp in their booth at SAP Sapphire 2018. Welcoming Mike McGibney to theCUBE from SAP. You're the SVP of Success Factors Service Delivery and Operations. Welcome. Well, thank you. So, Success Factors, largest people cloud in the world. So, you're probably a little bit busy. Just a little bit. <laughs> Tell us about what you're doing at Success Factors. Uh, so, I'm responsible for the delivery and operations of the cloud service. So we service all of our customers and continue to uh, introduce new capabilities into that cloud. Uh, we support them from payroll all the way through recruitment, basically from hire to retire. So Mike, not your first cloud, little background history. Me and Mike have been on a, a, <laughs> one of the, probably one of the toughest projects politically I've ever been on. Yes, de definitely. <laughs> so there's history, but great history. We, yep. we deliver success. You're not a, you're, you're, this isn't your first cloud. No. You've built clouds before. What's fundamentally different about the SAP people cloud versus clouds you've built in the past? I, I think the speed. Uh, the way this is accelerating both the, the breadth of the capabilities that we're offering, uh, when you think about the integrations into SAP, and the growth. So th this is moving truly at cloud speed. Uh, the things that we're shooting for today are already past, right? So we constantly have to be focused, uh, you know, out there on the horizon. We've got to adapt uh, very quickly, and we've got to implement very quickly. Our customers need it to accelerate their business, and our, our services need that that uh, support underneath them as well. So you guys, as you said, have this have this long history. So I'll let you guys chat in a minute. But in terms of customer experience, customer engagement, customer influence, that was kind of a uh, a, a lot of undertone in the keynote this morning. 50 million business users on yeah. success factors in 60 industries. How, are you, how do you, needing to get to the speed that you just mentioned, how do you get that customer feedback to drive evolution of the product as fast as they're demanding it? Well, so the, the product and engineering team uh, have, have uh, a, uh, a whole system around customer engagements with delivery panels and uh, steering committees. But from the operation side, we felt that it was important as well. Uh, we have a whole organization that uh, is focused on engaging the customer. We built our operational centers and we do uh, probably about 60 uh, customer tours a year through our operational centers. Um, we also do uh, about 200 customer calls from the operational team uh, a month. So globally, we, we work with the pre-sales, uh, uh, the uh, CE groups uh, and some of the other uh, SAP support groups to make sure that we have boots on the ground, understanding what our customers want, understanding what their experience is, so we can continue to adjust and reset the bar uh, you know, where it needs to be. So Lisa, I'm not going to dominate the conversation. Me and Mike can probably, we'll crack open the beer in a minute and we'll, <laughs> we'll continue, but there's other hero numbers from the stage. Talk, let's talk about the high level first, and then me and Mike can geek, geek out. What are some of the other excerpts from Bill's? Oh, good question. I, I think just some of the industries. Um, I always like to see which industries are kind of leading edge here. So he mentioned um, 23,000 HANA users in 25 different industries. Um, and I, I'm, I'm curious, that's a lot. And I'm curious to see what some of the key use cases are that you guys are driving with helping some you know, customers in many industries from you said uh, hire to retire. What are some of the key use cases that you're helping those customers to, to drive? Well, I, I think we, we have a, 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 a good presence in about every vertical from both the public and the private sector. The suite of tools that we have kind of service uh, you know, the, the, the uh, entire uh, uh, each of those use cases. I think when you start to think about the SAP suite and the integration story that they talked about with the intelligence and the analytics on top, that just takes it to another, another level. And I think that's really the underlying important message, I think, and that's what's going to help not only uh, success factors, but SAP continue to drive and lead uh, across the board. 
So can we talk a little bit about customer interaction? I think traditionally you've served up infrastructures to developers directly, but a lot of cases your direct customer may be an actual business user looking to transform digitally. How, talk about the experience, the difference in experience of running the cloud that was consumed by other technologies to potentially running the cloud that's uh, centered on people who are thinking about people and customers. Yeah, well, that's a great question because these are business critical activities. You think about something like learning, right? Uh, that's used to certify pilots before they, they can take off. So we can actually, uh, the uh, availability and the delivery of that service is critical. Uh, large amusement parks have to certify all the ride handlers. So this thing has to be available 24 by seven, 365 days a week. And that's just something like learning. When you think about some of the other facets, they are entrenched in our customers' uh, uh, modern business processes, and they're, they're all critical. So when we look at these, we have to look at them like we used to uh, some of the most critical functions in the, in the back end. So we run them like you would a, uh, from an operational perspective like a bank, right? Uh, with that resilience, those practices, that focus, um, but we also have to do it at the speed of cloud. <laughs> I uh, was just going to ask that question. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have two competing episodes. You know, I like to, well, people, SAP processes 70% of the transactions of the world. It is call, has been called the cash register of the cloud. Yeah. It is the <laughs> ultimate system of record. Therefore, it should never be touched. However, we have to move fast. We have to digitally transform. There are commercial entities that want to build cool new applications on Fiori, et cetera. There's other business integrations. How do you, how do you weigh those to what seems like competing interests? I, I think uh, Bert laid out the data strategy and how we're going to uh, integrate the data across the suite, uh, and that's going to be the key, right? Uh, instead of integrating and pointing to, we're going to have uh, single sources of data where, where data is going to reside. Uh, we're going to use that as a system of record. As the suite evolves, that'll give it the, the uh, uh, data integrity that it needs also the performance and integration perspective. So we're, we're sponsored by the data-driven company in NetApp, who is powering one of the most powerful data platforms on the planet, SAP. Talk about the relationship and the importance of NetApp's, NetApp vision in supporting your yeah. mission. So, so NetApp was, was uh, here at SAP long before I started, but I have a probably a 20 year, or probably 17 to 20 year history uh, with NetApp. Uh, and, you know, data is critical, right? The storage, the access, uh, the performance, uh, and uh, they, they've been a critical part of uh, almost every architecture I've worked on to date, right? Uh, rock solid performance, rock solid reliability, but more important to me is the partnership uh, with the company and the support that we get, uh, not just on the stuff that we're doing today, but thinking about how we're going to change in the future and supporting us as we evolve and helping us plan and, and think through that as well. One of the things that, um, that Bill talked about this morning as well is getting to this fourth gen of customer experience. That these expectations, we've talked about speed, that it's, everything has to be done yesterday, right? Yep. How are you guys working with NetApp delivering that fourth generation customer experience internally and to your 50 million business users? Well, I think you touched on bits and pieces of it. it, it it's a it's a whole suite of, or it's a it's a whole it's a whole uh, 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 program of plans, right? Of between Fury, right? Uh, you know, all those things in the front end where the customer touches, but in the back end, it's about speed and reliability to their data, right? So our architectures are se are, are getting simplified. Our data is getting uh, uh, condensed. Right? We need the compliance pieces, and that's where NetApp is going to play a, a core role in, in those pieces. So, back in traditional infrastructures and operations, we could tout speeds and feeds as one <laughs> of the best features of why you should use one service or another. As you extract the way everyone expects feeds and, speeds and feeds, what are some of the value props or KPIs for your new environment? So, uh, we've, we've really shifted, right? So one of the things that we've did, done is we've actually added uh, operational intelligence. So we have uh, uh, 
uh, basically a, a brain that sits on top of our cloud environment. It looks at uh, all of the transactions. It filters out all the noise. So the speeds and feeds are part of a, now a service or a business function that we're delivering. Uh, that metric down by itself is important, but unless you can correlate it to some business impact or something happening, it doesn't really have the weight that it needs. Right. So now what we're looking at is, is we've ingested and mapped all of the business transactions. We can proactively focus on the ones, so we filter out 99 and change percent of the noise, and then we prorate the things that we need to kind of pivot and focus on. We have uh, three global operational centers around the world, one in Budapest, uh, one in Bangalore, and one in Reston, and then we have a, uh, a global operation center that sits on the top, so the regionals sit in the region, uh, and they look at all of that feedback from that intelligence, so. So getting those key performance indicators out of the system, as I look at LinkedIn, I look at some of the common folks we have, you have a pretty consistent core team that you that that supported you over the past two or three different major iterations you, yeah. you, you've done. Talk through how collectively your team has looked at new innovations and in operation delivery such as DevOps, and you've changed the way that your core team approaches these challenges and the outcomes that you've been able to realize. Yeah, so, so for us, it, it, it's about, uh, you know, the architecture and technology evolves. As it evolves, it, it, it uh, makes a few things simpler. It always, also introduces some usually more complex challenges. Uh, but it's mitigating risk, delivering performance and reliability, uh, and uh, 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 maturing your actions. So if we do those basic things as we mature the technology underneath, we can drive that. So the team has been focused on, when we think about DevOps, we think about uh, delivering uh, seamlessly uh, new capabilities, features into the cloud. Uh, how do we do that with, and minimize risk uh, and do it automation, through automation and seamless, right? So it's how we segmented the application, how we built the resilience in, how our processes understand uh, and validate and be able to uh, stand in if something happens. I'm wondering on that from maybe a pivot is we talk about oftentimes at different events, uh, whether we're talking about you know, advanced analytics or data science, skills gap. Or, um, you know, I think Bill even said like upskilling. I think I heard yeah. that term this morning. I'm curious, as you were saying, that, that the, the folks that you've been working with for a long time on different projects, what are some of the, the skills that they're able to, you may be able to, to enable them to learn be, by being part of SAP? Is it something that helps accelerate their ability to develop even better, more competitive products? Yeah, so SAP has a, one of the best talent pools I've, I've ever seen across. Right? some very brilliant people in every business line. So there's, there's best practices that can be learned from everything that we do, right? So all you have to do is be able to have the conversations uh, and look around. Uh, bring in, when we brought the team in, about two years ago, we did a whole uh, 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 skills analysis, gap analysis of the skills that we had. We re-looked at our, uh, our operating model created a new operating model that was uh, enabling us to evolve from an operational perspective, and then put plans in place uh, and use the tools that we sell, right, to help uh, deliver uh, uh, development to the team. So basically, we became our own customer. We drove uh, development of our, you know, upskilling our existing resources, and we supplemented where needed, and we also pulled from the collective knowledge of SAP. So doing those three things helped us really accelerate and, and execute something that typically would take you know, three years in less than 12 months. Last question, Mike, for you. This morning's energetic keynote, we've talked about it a number of times already today. Yeah. Um, really, I think somebody on the show earlier said, uh, likened Bill McDermott to kind of really an evangelist, which is really refreshing. You don't see a lot of C-levels that are that, where you can feel and kind of see their passion. They've, SAP's been very vocal for a while about really wanting to disrupt the marketplace for CRM. Some big news coming out today. I'm just wondering, kind of culturally, to wrap this up, 
What excites you about this train that you're on at SAP? Well, I, I, I think that the, the message is electrifying and inside of SAP you feel that, right? So we've been feeling it as these bits and pieces have been coming out over the last year. So this is just a culmination of, of all the little pieces that we've known inside and uh, we're able to share externally. So I'm, I'm extremely excited about where we're at and where we're going. Uh, and obviously, anytime I get to hear Bill speak, it just amplifies it. Yeah, that, that energy was really, you could feel it from wherever you were, it was awesome. So, Mike, thanks so much for stopping by and catching up with your old buddy Keith and me I and know. <laughs> sharing what you guys are doing with Success Factors. Excellent, excellent. Thank thanks you very for, much. Oh, sorry, and thanks for watching theCUBE. Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend from SAP Sapphire in the NetApp booth. Thanks for watching.